Gillette. Uh, acquired not all that long ago by Procter & Gamble for $57 billion, okay? Now, as far as you and I and the average person on the street is concerned, what business is Gillette in? What do they make? Razor blades. Gillette's in the shaving business. They make razor blades, okay? So imagine that you work for Gillette. You're thinking about this energy thing. You're waking up in the morning and you're thinking, all right, I'm going to go to work today. What am I going to do? I'm going to make razor blades. Woo! Can, can, you think, can, you, can you get cranked up about that? Well, let me tell you something, man. They do. They do. And to say that Gillette makes razor blades is not exactly telling the whole story. I mean, yes, they have other product lines, certainly, but just in the razor blades alone, these guys have over 70% of the world's market share in razor blades, and they're the ones to beat as far as shaving technology goes. And there was this great little article in the Wall Street Journal uh, not too long ago. It was a profile on Gillette. And the question behind the writer's visit to Gillette was, how do they create an environment? How do they create an entire company, a whole culture, where people are so passionate, so turned on, so energetic about shaving? Which to me is a legitimate question. And it turns out it starts right in the hiring process. So they tell the story of this young woman. She's a business school graduate. She wants to work at Gillette. So she starts going through the whole round of interviews, right? They had a very extensive interview process. She goes to the interview number one, green light. Interview number two, green light. She's working her way all the way up the line. She's doing great. She's nailing it. She's now on her last interview. And as far as she's, she could tell, she, she's in. She's got it locked, right? The last question that she was asked in the last interview was, so, do you have any qualms? Anything you're concerned about? And just kind of half kidding, she said, well, not sure I want to spend the rest of my life worrying about underarms. <laughs> Guess what? She didn't get the job. They want people who want to spend the rest of their lives worrying about underarms. That's what they do. They worry about underarms and legs and faces and backs, whatever. They do. So then, listen to this. Then they go down into the prototype model shop, and they talk with a guy named George Turchinas, who was a manager of the prototype model shop, and also had the title of preferred tester. So what do you infer from that? What does this guy do for a living? He shaves. Now listen to what he said. I'm going to warn you ahead of time. It's going to sound kind of sick, all right? But, but here's what he said, and I quote, we bleed so you'll get a good shave at home. <laughs> this is my 27th year, he said. Came here my first week, haven't missed a day of shaving. We bleed so you'll get a good shave at home. Now, now that's a hell of a mission statement if you ask me. I'd like to see him laminate that in a little card and hand it out to everybody. <clears throat> so then, then they go down into the, into the shaving technology laboratory and they talk to a guy named Donald Chalk who is the vice president of the shaving technology laboratory and I think that title speaks volumes in and of itself. And they ask Mr. Chalk, just what exactly is it that you people do here in the shaving technology laboratory? Now listen to the way he answers this question and you tell me if there's any energy in this, all right? Here's what he said, and I quote, we test the blade guard, the blade edge, the angle of the razor, the balance of the handle, the length, the heft, the width, what happens to the chemistry of the skin. What happens to the hair when you pull it? What happens to the follicle? We own the face, he said. <laughs> we know more about shaving than anybody. I don't think obsession is too strong a word. And then he paused and said, I've got to be careful. I don't want to sound crazy. <laughs> a little too late for that, Donald. <laughs> but that's not crazy. That's, that's energy, right? These guys don't make razor blades. There's something much bigger going on there. So then I shared this example with a bunch of folks from the retail industry in Chicago uh, last year sometime. And there are a lot of different retail companies represented there, that uh, many of which you'd recognize. And I, I gave my little example about Gillette. Once again, a couple of days later, I got back to my office and I had an email from somebody who was in that group. And this was a woman from the container store. You guys familiar with the container store? Okay. So whether or not you've ever actually been into a container store, what would you gather from the name of the company? What do they make? They make containers. They make stuff that you put stuff in, basically. And she wrote to tell me, she said, I heard what you said about Gillette, but I'm here to tell you that if you think Gillette gets excited about razor blades, you should see how excited we get about trash cans. <laughs> she was serious. She sent me this whole pile of material, all these documents, internal documents from the container store, like newsletters and training materials and whatnot. And what emanated from this stuff 
was how much these people loved their product line and loved that company. And I don't know if you happen to see it, but Fortune Magazine's 2006 list of 100 best companies to work for in the U.S., Container Store was number six. And they've been on that list for several years. Trash cans. So then I was, I was down in Mexico uh, doing an event for um, Discovery Network. They had a little boondoggle for their, their customers from the Latin American markets. And you can imagine you know, their customers are people that advertise on the various discovery channels, right? So we had consumer product companies and we had advertising agencies, PR agencies, the whole thing. And I, I gave my example about Gillette. I talked a little bit about the container store. And after I was finished, this young woman from Columbia came up to me. She worked for Kimberly Clark. And she, she pulled me aside and she said, uh, I, I listened very carefully to what you said about Gillette and the container store. And she said, I know exactly what you mean. She said, I'm the brand manager in the Latin American markets for Huggies diapers. And then she said, so you can imagine what I'm obsessed with. <laughs> but, you know, I, thought, I thought it was pretty funny. And then she said, however, I am not in the business of selling diapers. I'm in the business of creating happy babies and happy moms. She said, that's what I really do, and that's what I tell people all the time. And, you know, you got to take it on faith from me, folks. This wasn't marketing spin. I mean, she meant it. This came right from her heart. That's what I really do, and that's what I tell people all the time. So, let's review, shall we? Razor blades, trash cans, and diapers. I mean, it sounds like a landfill, doesn't it? <laughs> I mean, if you can generate energy around that, don't tell me there's nothing to get excited and energetic about in the kind of work that you folks do, because I just don't buy it.